and um, we were headed home. Our church party is at 5 and it is now 2 o'clock, so we've got a few hours to get breakfast on the table, and I don't think we'll have a problem doing that. But before we get home, I have been wanting to do a Bible study. And so, me and Chris are going to do one right quick with y'all if you're interested. Um, this Bible study is going to be, what does it really mean to take the Lord's name in vain? Because many people believe it's just saying a really bad word. And you know the one I'm talking about, the GD word. So, we're going to talk a little bit about why that's not what it means and what it really means so many of us walk around and we may be breaking that third commandment and we may not even be knowing it because so many of us were taught growing up that it was to say one word and that would be a pretty easy commandment to keep if that's all it meant but that is really not what it means at all so, we're going to talk about that today. Um, I'm going to read the scripture to you so you'll know where it's coming out of. We were reading in, um, just one second. We were reading in Exodus when Moses was given the Ten Commandments. And almost everybody knows this uh, Bible verse. It says, Thou shalt not take the Lord thy God... Wait a minute. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord, thy God, big G, in vain. For the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Okay. So, tell Tillman we said hello to Melissa. Maybe he'll like this study. So, um, when I was growing up, I was always taught that that meant... Don't say the GD word, okay? Um, and that that's pretty much what I was told. What about you, Chris? Was it ever mentioned in your family or that what that meant? Mainly, I mean, like, yeah, that's what most people took it, like using the Lord's name as a curse word. Right. You mean it, a curse word or right. a curse word. Okay. Um, what... I mean, I've studied this before, but what we know is that back at the time when this was written, of course, it was a different time and a different people and a different, uh, different things were going on. And um, he was giving this information to the people that had just fled Egypt. Um, and they were trying to get to Canaan. Uh, back at that time, a lot of the surrounding areas that they were in the countries that they were traveling through and came in contact with, the people did um, worship other gods, okay? So they didn't just worship our main god, which we call God. They worshiped all kind of gods, okay? And they would use the name of their god... Uh, during a battle or during uh, different times, uh, different things that they were going through. Let's say, for instance, um, let's say their god was what, Chris? Baal? Yeah, Baal. Baal was one. And they may be going into a battle and they may say, Baal said we're going to conquer this battle. Or Baal said this. Or we're doing this in the name of Baal. Okay, and so that was common, quite common. And when you think about it, things that we say are kind of common when we use God's name, like um, what? Do you, what example, Chris? Like if it's using God's name just as in passing, you know, like a lot of people will say, well. It's, it's uh, taking the Lord's name in vain if you ever say God's name and you don't really mean it in some kind of significant way. You know, so like if you're saying somebody sneezes and you say, God bless you, you know, when, when you re 
really stopping and praying and intending for God to actually bless that person or were you just making a general just throwing God's name in there you know for no I mean for a particular reason but not to uh, you know you're not really praying for God to bless them it's just something that you say so some people would say that that is vainly using God's name um, and a lot of people get confused between cursing or profanity and you know using God's name in vain a lot of things that we that we call cursing is really profanity it's using things that are profane uh, using words that are profane they have sexual meanings and stuff like that or they're just dirty nasty words those are profane so I think that's part of it Melissa yeah. says it's like uh, oh my god people say that a lot that's these a, days yeah yes and that is that is vainly you know but that like for Moses you got to think who Moses was Moses is the man that God literally talked to and that God literally gave the Ten Commandments to. He heard God's voice. He, you know, he saw, you know, when he was on Mount Sinai, he actually saw God. Uh, so when Moses came down and he talked to the people and he said, God said, it was something that God really said. And uh, all these other people that lived in their area of Canaan, they were all the time saying, Baal said this, and this God said that. And, I, and God didn't want his name being used like those gods, little g, like their name was used. God didn't want just whoever saying, God said this, God said that, God wants this, God wants that. He talked to Moses. Or, and what and, we do today is like, you'll you'll encounter people that say, God said for me yeah. to do this. Or I talked to God, and this is what he told me to do. Or they're telling you what God said. Now, if you're telling somebody what God said, and it really is what God said, like Moses, God's okay with that. Right. Because or something he, he said. said in his word. Yeah. But if you're saying something that God really didn't say, even if you're, even if you really believe it. Or if, even if you even think if it's for something good. Yeah, if you're saying something that God did not say, and you're claiming that it is something that God said, that's using God's name in vain. That's claiming that God said something, and God is very concerned with his name and his reputation and he's perfect and he does not want his name used for something that is that's not what he said and that's what we have to be careful with now is it okay to say you know gd is it okay to say god bless you are those but well the bible says all kind of things about using uh, saying things that are not uh that are corrupt the bible tells you not to use not to have let uh, corrupt things proceed out of your mouth. The Bible tells you not to be profane. The Bible tells you not to do things that would offend others. The Bible covers all that stuff and it plainly says you should not do that. If it's something that's offensive, like GD is offensive to people, you shouldn't say it. Do you need to get over? You shouldn't say it. Yeah. So the, you know, those words are wrong and it is wrong to do that. We're not saying that is. Not what about when I say, good Lord, we or are saying, Lord of mercy, or for heaven's sakes? I, I don't know. I mean, I think it depends a lot on what somebody's heart is and how they're using that. But if that offends people, you know, if you're around somebody and you know that they don't really like that, you really shouldn't do it. Um, bottom line, you know. And I that's, think it's the, the intentions of the heart, it. too. Like, when yeah. I say, Lord of mercy, I don't mean she's it in really, a bad way. She's not really trying to make the Lord have mercy. 
no. on somebody. It's not a prayer, Lord, please have mercy on, you know, it's an expression that people use. Right. But the commandment, the the commandment is about, it, and it's something that people can do all the time and not, the commandment is about making sure that you are, when you say, you know, Yea, the Lord hath said. It better be, yea, the Lord hath said. It better be exactly what he said. And a lot of people want to say things about, well, the Bible says, what's the Bible? It's God's Word. If you believe the Bible is the Word of God, it's, it, is a, it's, you know, it is the written Word of God, then what a lot of people want to do is say, well, the Bible says, you, you know, and the Bible don't say that. Well, if you're doing that, if you're saying, the Bible says, you know, that, uh, da, da, da. A big one is the Bible says if you kill yourself, you're going to hell. Yeah, the Bible. That's a big say, one. The Bible doesn't say. The Bible that. doesn't say that. But a lot of people, but think they know things that the Bible says, and when they say the Bible says this, it's like they're saying God says this, and God does not say that. That's taking the Lord's name in vain. That's yeah. taking His word in vain, and His name in vain, because you're claiming to say something in the place of God. So that's what that's, it really means. That's what that, taking the Lord's name in vain yeah, and that's really way worse, means. You know, it's not saying yeah. a word like GD. It's not um, saying, oh my Which God. Is still a sin. but Or oh my yeah, God or Lord of yeah. mercy or for heaven's sakes yeah. or bless you. So if you want to get that detailed about it and it convicts your heart, saying, anything oh my that God, convicts say, your heart, you yeah. shouldn't do. If saying, oh my God's a sin, saying bless you is a sin. Right. Unless you are stopping and... Actually going to you know, bless somebody for yeah, sneezing <laughs> and you really mean it yeah, in a wholehearted, loving, godly way, then it's a sin too. So um, does that mean we can't say bless you? When, no, because we're not... God knows that we're not saying that to really bless somebody and, but if you're and, and one talk of these to him people, about it. But if you're a person whose conscience feels, because the Bible teaches this too, that if something is wrong in your conscience, if it's wrong to you, you shouldn't do it. Right. So if to you it's wrong, you know, to say, oh my God, in, in your conscience, you know, burdens you. Now, I'm not saying that's the Holy Spirit, but because people have a conscience too. People have a personal, people have personal things that they feel are right or wrong. And if you have a personal feeling about something like that and it's wrong to you, then you, the Bible tells you also that in some other verses that you should not do that. Um, but if you're one of these people that thinks saying, oh my God, then you need to realize God bless. Liz Powell Witt says them. Uh, what is blasphemy? Blasphemy is when you, um, like it talks about blaspheming the Holy Ghost. That's like saying something against God. Um, like saying that, that uh, Jesus is not the Son of God. You know, you're saying that something that God, the nature of God, you're saying something against the nature of God. So you're um, actually, instead of taking his taking something in vain, you're actually saying that it's not true. It's like a personal thing about That's God. That's totally different. Like God's name, it, God has a name, and his name is Yahweh. That is his name. Uh, not everybody uses that name. The Jews could not even say that name out loud. They couldn't even say his name. If they said his name, they were using it in a way, you know, that was blasphemous or whatever. So that's like something personally about God or against God. Um, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you one more question, but we're about to get on 20, so we can't be on here much longer. Um, somebody asked, were you a pastor? And, and I don't know if they're asking, are you a pastor? Because they think that you have to be a pastor to, you know, talk about these kinds of things, or I don't, I don't really know what they mean by it. But what do you have to say about that? Do you want to just say a couple of things? We're all, you realize that when you become a Christian, no matter who you are, whether you're a man or woman, we are all saints of God and we are all commanded 
to study the scriptures. And we all have the, if you're saved, you have the Holy Spirit. Right. And the Holy Spirit helps you understand, you know, when you read the Bible. It also helps you understand what's right and what's wrong. And this, y'all may have these books, but there's always been a book, and y'all probably know what I'm talking to. It starts with the name Jesus. And it's written in the tense of God. So every day it talks about what God says to you. Now, I, my Holy Spirit that lives in me has always... You don't have a Holy Spirit. I know. The Holy Spirit. The There's Holy Spirit. People that are saved. There's one Holy Spirit. Well, I'm just saying, I I felt like it was the Holy Spirit. Maybe it wasn't, but it. I just, when I read that, there's something about them pretending to be God that bothers me. Um, and just like what we just figured out about using the Lord's name in vain, um, is that is that a sin that they've written that book in the tents of God? I don't know. Um, that's between them and God. But unless God really says the things that they're saying that he said, I don't think it's right for them to write a book like that. Um, I mean, why can't they just say that it's their words instead of his? So, um, anyway, I forgot how I got off on that one. Do you remember? The... Um The basic idea is that any person can say what God has said. You just better make sure that's really what he said. And the pastors understand that. Anybody that gets up in the pulpit and preaches, really, that they are at the most at danger. Anybody that teaches the Bible um, in a Sunday school class or anybody that instructs the Bible, they are the most at danger. They have to be very careful. And when they are saying something that is their opinion, like when we've said things that are our opinion, we say, I think, you know, um, or it seems to me that the Bible is saying this. You know, don't, you know, a lot of people are very, they're very confident people and they'll read something they'll take one verse and I'll say it means this uh, but there's usually more to it there's context you have to consider there's who the the passage was to there's uh, when the passage was written uh, there's you know then you need to see what the words in the passage actually really mean I mean there's all kind of things that you have to study when you look at the Bible and you can't just be loose with it and you can't just throw things out there that you heard things. or some preacher taught you when you were yeah, a kid that you heard or what your granddaddy said. Church, it's Tony, it's Tony Partington. Yeah. And she says, when I ask if you was a pastor, if you get on the pulpit stand. That's what she put. I can, and I have. But he's not and ordained I'm not, to I'm preach. I'm not an ordained pastor. But we're all supposed to um, preach. I mean, we're supposed to love God enough, not be ashamed and talk about the Bible. But you can tell by what we told you today, you're not supposed to just get up and talk about what you've been told. Yeah, when I teach. Or talk about what you think. Yeah. You're supposed to talk about what the Bible actually says. And if it's your opinion, you better make it clear, this is my opinion. So This is what, I'm not really sure, but it seems to me that this is what this is saying. Now that may not sound as good to somebody you're teaching, but I'm going to tell you, it's better than saying, well, God said a man can't have long hair. Well, that sounds, you know, they'd pull a verse out and say that, you know. And Take it, it out of context. Different, you know, but you better make sure that that's really what. Now, if people do it and they honestly think that's really what it says, they, maybe within their conscience they're okay. I don't know. But all I know is God don't want you using his name claiming Things that are not Things true. That he didn't say. He also doesn't like for you to use his name to your advantage. That's also taking his name in vain. Yeah. We didn't talk about that one. He doesn't like for you to claim to be a Christian and, you know, make out like you're this big Christian so that you can be in an advantage point 
to... You can't, you can't give me a ticket. I'm a Christian. Right. You can't... My son... You can't put my son in in-school suspension. He's he a Christian. To, he goes to Sunday school every... You know, he would never like... You know... Right. You can't, you can't do that either. Use God... You can't use Him something. for your advantage either. So, I hope this study today helped y'all. I hope it opened your eyes as to what is taking the Lord's name in vain. Um, I hope that it encourages some of you guys to get in the Bible and study Scripture and not just believe everything that you've been told by a pastor when you were a kid or when you were young. God does instruct us as His children. And it is a commandment to study His Word, not just glance at it when you're at church on Sunday. He wants us to know His Word. And you can't know everything about His Word overnight. You will learn as the Holy Spirit wants you to learn. But I am glad that you guys are watching. I'm glad that you love the Lord. And I'm glad that you love Him enough to want to know what the Scripture says. Uh, or even just tune in with with the uh, other believers and be encouraged in the Lord on a beautiful day like today. The sun is shining. The weather's perfect. There goes a motorcycle. And we're headed home to have a big Christmas party. Um, Y'all have a wonderful day. I love you very much. God bless each and every one of you. And I do pray for you often. And when you don't comment and come on here for a while, I do wonder, you know, if you're watching or where you're at and Hope everything's okay. So, we love y'all, and uh, we'll see y'all soon. We had a great trip to St. Mary's and got a lot done in the house. Bye, love ya.